At the end of each of my live streams, I go through a series of steps where I take all the links that I talked about in the show and I convert them into different formats using ChatGPT. So I'm going to show you how that process works and how to put together complex prompts using advanced ChatGPT features to automate these kind of tasks. So let's play. For each episode, I prepare a browser window with tabs for each of the links that I want to use. And during the show, I usually add tabs as people ask questions or when I talk to a guest. After the show, I want to grab not just the links, but also the page titles from each of these URLs. I use a special extension called Tab Copy that does this automatically. I've got this installed in this browser. And if I click on it, you can see that I can copy just the selected tab all the tabs in the current window or the tabs in all the windows that are open. There's also three formats that you can use. I like the expanded format because it'll copy the page title and then the URL. Let's go ahead and choose that and I'll copy the 19 tabs in this current window. Now that's copied to the clipboard. I'm going to pull up a simple text editor to show you what I get and what we need to do. Let's go ahead and paste that in here. Notice that the titles often include the name of the website. So I want to get rid of that. Some links might also include tracking codes for things like Google Analytics. So I want my prompt to get rid of that as well. Another problem is that some websites generate huge titles. So I want to rewrite those into something more succinct. I would also like to create shorter versions of these links. I like to use a shortener called Switchy. That lets me create shorter links with a custom URL so that they're easier to type in. It also helps me track how many people click to follow each URL. Switchy has this great feature where I can feed it all my links at once called bulk import. But that means that I have to create a CSV or comma separated file in a very specific format. Now that we know where we're going, let's get started with the prompt. I'm going to type this into my text editor, not ChatGPT. ChatGPT is too sensitive about carriage returns. So let's go ahead and start with something simple. I have a list of website page titles with links, which I'll be pasting at the end of this message. I want you to follow these instructions. Let's go ahead and add some instructions to shorten the title we get from tab copy. I want to ask it to rewrite the old title into a new title so that it's simpler, straightforward, and informative. Notice that I made the word new title here in capitals. That's what I like to call an identifier. Later on in the prompt, I can refer to this identifier to get to this shorter title. Let's add some additional details for this new title. I'll indent them so that it's clear that these instructions relate to the title. I'll ask it to remove any part of the title that identifies the company or the website. I'll also ask it to remove any prefixes in the old title that are meant to group information. Finally, I'll ask it to make sure the new titles are no more than 40 characters long. Now we can move to some other instructions. I'll ask it to remove any tracking information from links and create a new link with the results. This will be another identifier that I can use later. Finally, I want to specify the format that the short links will have. I'm going to have to create a slug, which is a unique identifier that I can use. And here I want to use some variables that will let me update this prompt whenever I'm doing a new show. So I'm going to say create a slug for each link, format it like this with a prefix, the words EP, and then an episode number, and then a number that begins with one. And for every link that I have in my project, I have a number two, three, et cetera, et cetera. I use curly braces here, which is a JavaScript templating convention, but you can use other variables if you're used to something else. I'm going to create a section called variables and I'll add those two items. And then whenever I have a new show, I can change the prefix. And whenever I have a new episode, I can just add the new episode number. If you try to do too many things at once, ChatGPT will often get confused. So I'm going to ask it to go slowly step by step and then make sure that it verifies with me that what it's done is correct before it continues. I'll say there are three different formats I want you to create. I want you to think of them individually, create each list, then stop and ask me to verify you did it correctly before continuing. Now let's enter the different formats. I'm going to begin with a format that I might use for YouTube. And I'm going to indent the instructions here to make it clear. Because I'm going to copy and paste this into YouTube, I'll ask it to use the title show links for the list. And that way I can just copy the title as well as the links as it creates them. I'm going to ask that it formats the list of links like this using the new title and then the URL with the slug at the end. 
Now, this is something that Switchy is going to generate for us. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to output this as code. That way, it'll output a code block, which has a very nice copy button that I can hit whenever I want to copy this text so I can paste it into YouTube. Next will be my newsletter or post format. This will just have the same title called show links. I'm going to ask it to create this using the markdown format, which will allow me to copy and paste the links from here. And I can include them in a newsletter. And then I'll tell you how to output the markdown format, which is the name of the link in brackets, and then the URL in parentheses. Now in here, I'm going to include the first of many negative prompts. These are prompts that help ChatGPT be more accurate by asking it not to do certain things. So here I am double asking it to not output this list as code like it did the last time, but make sure that it's using Markdown instead. Sometimes adding these negative prompts really helps. And you'll notice that I typed in the words do not in capitals. Sometimes using capital letters is more meaningful to something like ChatGPT. Finally, I'm going to ask it to create the CSV format. In the last ChatGPT update, OpenAI added a multimodal capability to all prompts, which means that you can ask it to use the code interpreters, you can ask it to generate images, or do just regular prompting. And the problem is that if I ask it to create the CSV format first, it's going to want to continue to do that for every one of the other items. So I want to put this one at the end on purpose. I'll ask it to create a list of the links, format it like this with the keywords new link, which is the new title of my link, and then the slug. I'll also need it to use the text link and then slug at the top as a header so that Switchy understands this properly. Finally, I'll ask it to output this as a CSV document. And when it does that, it's going to switch to the code interpreter to take care of this task. So you'll see that it will analyze what I gave it and it'll write a Python program to output these links. I can take advantage of all the variables that I created by adding the prefix and the episode number in the name of the file as well. Now let's go ahead and add a placeholder for where we would put the links. So I like to put those in brackets. So I'm going to use the start links right here. And of course, at the very end, it's going to have an end links. And this is where I would paste the links from the Chrome extension. Now I'm going to add a few additional negative prompts here. ChatGPT tends to pay special attention to what you have at the top of a prompt, as well as the last thing that you include in a prompt. So it's a good idea to add negative prompts at the end. First, I'm going to ask it not to show a summary of everything. Just go straight to the result. In the past, when I've used this, it often tries to sort of summarize what I'm trying to do. And I just want it to output the links instead of doing that. I'm also going to reinforce that it should only use the code interpreter in order to output the CSV file. All right, so this is a great looking prompt. I'm going to go ahead and paste all of the links from my Chrome extension, and I'm going to copy this prompt and I'll paste it in a new ChatGPT message. Excellent. It's asking me for confirmation, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. Notice that there's also a copy code button, which if I copy this, will let me just paste this into YouTube. Let's go ahead and ask it to continue. I'm just going to say go. That should be enough. And then the newsletter links look great. However, it added this title show links here which I don't really need, but I'm going to live with this. All I needed was these links in that format. So I'll just go ahead and say go again. Now it's going to use the code interpreter tool to create this next set of links. And you can actually click on this little arrow right here to see what it's doing. Let's go ahead and close that and wait until it's done. All right, let's go ahead and download this file. And it looks like it did a pretty good job here. Now I wish ChatGPT was perfect, but this is a pretty good prompt that's given us everything we need in order to do our work. The real key to learning advanced prompting is to use a real world problem that you're trying to solve, but then also understanding how you can use prompting techniques like variables, identifiers, and negative prompts. You can also take full advantage of all the capabilities of ChatGPT, like asking it to output files for us using the code interpreter.